Hello everyone and welcome back to the Easy Agile podcast for 2021. Each episode, we talk with some of the most interesting people in tech, in agile and in leading businesses around the world to share fresh perspectives and learn from the wealth of knowledge each guest has to share. I'm Caitlin and I'm the Graduate Marketing Coordinator at Easy Agile and your host for this episode. We are thrilled to be back and have some amazing guests lined up this season. So to kick us off, I'm really excited to be talking with Sarah Hajipur. Sarah has so much rich and diverse experience in the Agile space. She's an Agile coach, a business transformation leader, a project and program manager, and more recently, a podcast host and author. She is the jack of all trades and has been in the business agility space for over 10 years. In this episode, Sarah and I chat about the significance of goal setting and in particular goal setting in unpredictable times. We chat about her most recent projects, the Agility Podcast with Sarah Hajipur and her book on Agile case studies. And of course, with International Women's Day coming up, Sarah shared some amazing advice and her thoughts on the way forward for women in Agile. She highlighted the importance of raising your hand and asking for help when you need it, as well as embracing qualities that aren't always traditionally thought of in leaders. It was such a thoughtful and insightful discussion. I got a lot of value out of our conversation and received some great advice that I'm really looking forward to putting into practice. I know those listening will feel the same. Let's jump in. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us and spending some time with me today. Sure, thanks for having me. So being our first guest for the year, I wanted to ask you about any New Year's resolutions, are you on track? Are you a believer in them? Or do you have a different type of goal setting process? That's a great question because we discussed this with a couple of friends and we realized New Year's resolution is always going to be some kind of like a huge goal that we don't know if we're going to meet it or not. And thinking agile, business agility, and as an agile coach, I believe in the fact that let's have smaller goals and review them every three months, every six months and see where we're at. Um, except like kind of instead of looking into huge goals that we don't know what's going to happen, because there's always a lot of uncertainties, even in our personal lives regarding the goals that we set up for ourselves. So, yeah, that's how I look at it quarterly. Yeah quarterly personal goals let's say that (laughs) yeah yeah I love that yeah I think if the last years taught us anything I think we can all agree how unpredictable things can become so those original goals um yeah the original goals might have to take a couple detours so what would be that's true your advice for setting career goals in like uncertain times That's a great question. Um, For career goals, I I believe it really matters that you do something that you're interested in, at least. If it's not, if you still haven't found your passion, that's fine. Like, especially people like young professionals, it's okay if you don't haven't found your passion yet, but you can still follow a a, um, uh, basically career path, starting with things that you like to do, kind of you enjoy and you learn through the way. I was listening to one of the um, uh, fashion icons, uh, YouTube a couple of days ago, and the interviewer was asking her, uh, what, what do you think about like what was your career path? How did you how did you get to this to this place you are now? And I loved what she told everybody, the students, and that was go and find a career, find a job and learn. You first need to learn a lot of skills before you decide what you're actually good at. You decide you understand what's your weaknesses and your strengths. Right. Because not all of us, you know, have these amazing ideas all the time. And that's fine. Um, I'm not very much pro. Everybody has to be a visionary and everybody has to think, you know, with an, have like big, the shiny goals and ideas. I think that's perfectly fine to just um, find the kind of job that you're the co- kind of career path that you're comfortable with yeah. and then sometimes get out of your comfort zone and then discover as you go you know life is to explore not to just push yourself in the corner all the time and just compare yourself with everybody else yeah I love that that's great advice so you've recently added podcast host and author to your resume were they always career goals of yours no absolutely not well, I'm a little bit of an introverted person. 
So kind of sitting in front of camera, even talking and having people hear me was always like, oh my God, I know I need to talk about this, like even with my teams and stuff, but um, I will do it only if it's necessary. But what got me into podcasting was that I figured there's a lot of questions that I'm finding answers when I'm having conversations and meetups and in different groups, the professional groups that I'm in. And I wanted other people to hear those as well. Um, I talk to people who have great insights and have been way longer than me in the career. So I'm learning at the same time. And I want to share that learning with everybody else. That's the reason I'm doing the podcast. Yeah, that's great. I love that. And I think you kind of touched on this earlier, but I think being in the agile space, sometimes it can be a nice reminder for you to have a bit of a focus, but then reflect and understand sort of where to be more effective and adjust accordingly. So do you think that, you know, you mentioned that with your career goals, so you think that those agile principles can be applied beyond the usual use case? I do. I believe that it's a very intuitive, like agile is a very intuitive way of working and way of thinking. That's why now it's expanded to other industries. It didn't stay with DevOps and IT and development. It is now a lot of different industries adopting this because it's a mindset change. And just not just using Scrum. It's not just using Kanban. It is about understanding how to be able to reflect on and adapt to the faster changes that are happening in the world. And that also applies to our personal lives as well. I mean, I used to have you know, set goals when I was 18 years old, I'm going to be this at 30. But did they happen? No. In some aspects, I achieved much, much more. And in some aspects, I just changed my goal. Um, I think the changes that are happening in the world that are more rapid, it demands us to change as well. Um, Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So just to circle back a little bit there for your podcast, just for our audience listening, what platforms can they access your podcast on? I'm on every, all of the main uh, platforms. I'm in um, uh, Apple Podcasts. I'm in Spotify. I'm in Amazon. Uh, most of the uh, prominent um, uh, podcast platforms. Awesome. And then just again for our audience, your podcast is called The Agility Podcast with Sarah Hajipur. That's correct. Yes. Awesome. That's great. What do you think has been the most valuable lesson you've learned from your podcast so far? Is it something guest has shared or something you've learned along the way? Um, what I have learned, I have learned a lot from the people that I interview because they, I make sure that I talk to people who know more than me and have been in this field more than me and in different industries. The main thing I would say is that agile and business agility is about mindset rather than the tools and processes. And the fact that world, the world overall is moving towards a more human centric way of working, right? So basically that's why I say agile is um, more intuitive rather than just following A, B, C, D. Um, yeah, this is the core, the main thing that I, that I have uh, learned from my interviewees. Yeah, amazing. You've also started writing a book at the moment. Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How did that project begin? I actually love this project. (laughs) In this book, the way uh, way I actually started writing the book was, um, so book came first and then the podcast happened. Okay, yeah. I was... I was, um, I attend a lot of meetups. So um, for for young professionals and even for professionals who, you know, are um, very much, you know, skilled in what they do, meetups are a great place to meet and uh, expand your network and learn from from your peers. So I was attending all of these and I was learning from people. And then I decided I really want to have one-on-one conversations with them. Um, And eventually I figured that a lot of the agile coaches, a lot of, uh, executive levels and a lot of consultants they have a lot to share but there is no I have I didn't see like any platform that kind of unifies that and said okay you know what are the learnings that we can share a lot of the mistakes because in the meetups groups people feel safe to share and be vulnerable 
And I was in multiple meetups. So I heard very similar stories from people, the mistakes that have been repeated by a coach somewhere else, right? So I thought that'd be a great idea to put these in agile cases. So it's going to be agile case studies and share it with everyone. So um, especially the young coaches who are stepping into the business, there's a lot of unknowns. I don't want them to be afraid, right? I don't want them to think, okay, this is a huge task. I'm never going to, like, there's always going to be a lot of unknowns. Yes. And just see that I, I kind of want to give that visibility that everybody else is experiencing the same, even if they have 25 years of experience, which is amazing, right? Yeah. And that's the reason I started writing the book. So I interview with agile coaches and um, agile consultants that have been around um, at least uh, five to 10 years and led agile transformation projects. And then from there, one of my interviews once said, you should do a podcast. Um, I like to talk about this too. I'm like, this is great. And that was the, that was then like the, the, the week after I was like running around looking for tools to start my podcast. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Sounds so good. So what's the process been like? Like how have you found, you know, from ideation to where you are now and then eventually when you're publishing it? For the, for the podcast? For the book. For the book, so I go to these meetups and I listen to what the um, the coaches and the executives are sharing, right? The ones that are exciting for me, a kind of a new for me, I will ask them. I connect with them over in LinkedIn and people are, are so open to sharing their experience with you. And it's not, I've never had even one person to, to tell me, no, I don't want to talk about this or anything. People want to share. So I approach and I say, hey, this is, I have a book um, outline or guideline. It's a two-pager. I send it to them and I ask them if they're interested to talk to me about this. And um, they let me know and then I'll select a time. And um, first session, it's like a half an hour. They kind of, it's a kind of a brainstorming session. What is the, the what are the case is that they feel they want to share then they, we pick one and the session after that they'll actually go through the um the case with me i record it draft it and then uh, share it on google drive back and forth until we're happy with the outcome yeah awesome do you have a timeline at the moment when can we expect to be able to read it i'm looking forward to end of around the end of 2021 because nice. it's 100 cases and um i'm, yeah, I'm wow. optimistic that i'll have that yeah, awesome. It's so exciting. Let's look forward to. Thank you. Now, I also wanted to touch on um, International Women's Day is coming up and um, you've been in the Agile space for a few years now. I assume that you've probably witnessed a bit of change in the space. Have there been any pivotal moments that have sort of led to where you are today? Well, I think that um, a lot of women are are being attracted to the the agile um, practices, the different agile roles. And I have seen a lot more women um, as scrum masters, as product owners, and as agile managers or agile project managers. A lot of different roles are being kind of um, kind of uh, flourishing in this area. And I've seen a lot of women contribute. One of my um, goals actually in my book and in my podcast is to be able to find these women and talk to them regardless of where they are in the world um yeah i just i just feel that women can can grow really in this in this area in the agile mindset because women are more the collaboration piece right um we I don't, I, I can't tell we, we're less competitive. I haven't done a research on that, but I have discussed it with um, with people. Like, do you think that women are more collaborative rather than comp comp competitive? Because competition is great, but you need a lot of collaboration and agile um, and a lot of nurturing. You need to have that nurturing um, feeling, the nurturing mindset, which is, that's what a scrum master does, right? Uh, one of the key um, characteristics of a scrum master has to be they have to have this nurturing perspective to bring it to the team. It's funny you mentioned because I actually have read some stuff myself about women typically possessing more of that open leadership style and that yeah. open leadership seems to complement the agile space really nicely. So that's exactly yeah. Yeah yeah it's yeah. great and I think there's um lots that we can take from that open leadership and the direct leadership so men and women coming forward and finding that middle ground and 
yeah, I feel like Agile is a great space to do that in. But um, yes, I, I totally agree. Yeah. 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 So what drove your passion? I guess what made you want to pursue a career in that space, in this space? Because because I feel it's more of, um, of I love the collaboration piece and I love the vulnerability piece. Like people are allowed to be vulnerable and in, in the teams that they work in. And it is a culture that is more human rather than super strict we're not allowed to make mistakes we're not allowed to be wrong leaders are supposed to know everything right off the bat you know but in reality that's not the case leaders have to feel comfortable not knowing a lot of things that are not even known right where a lot of times i always say we're in the unknown unknown zone right and in that zone even leaders are not supposed to know everything, right? Um, so a, a lot of it starts with one of the other things that I learned from interviews is that it all starts with the leadership. So the agile transformations, the leaders have to first feel, um, create that um, atmosphere of collaboration and of trust and psychological safety with, among themselves. And then only then they can help with teams to be able to thrive in the, those kind of atmospheres as well. Women in Agile and women in leadership. Um, I would say that there's, I like to say, and I, what I see is a lot of men and women both um, that are changing their perspective from process and tool centric to people centric because it's wor it works better for everyone. And I see change really happening in, in all industries, I, I see it in retail, I see it in construction, um, obviously in IT, in the finance system. And there's all men and women like hand in hand um, trying to uh, kind of embrace this way of thinking and this way of working. And women are being more comfortable to grow and kind of raise their hand and say, hey, I can make a change, I can, I can take this role. Um, because they understand, because they bring that psychological safety that we, like women yes. for ages, you know, it, it, it has been a workplace, has been you know, something that was mostly um, men, and we're gradually getting into the workforce uh, or, you know, uh, the business world as females. So that psychological safety has allowed women to raise their hand and, you know, um, grow in different roles and leadership roles, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Has there been any resources or um, networks, things like that, that have helped you along your journey? Learning from everybody else, like creating a network, expanding my network, and to, you know, coming in and saying, hey, I don't know, I want to know. You know, there is all of these amazing things that are happening. I like to understand how this works and there's always it's like i remember um um it was one of these founders who's the founder of apple oh my god don't tell me steve jobs, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love this quote from steve jobs that says there has never been a time where i asked for help and people didn't help me so just raise your hand and say, I need help. And what is that help that I need? I need to know about this. What what does it mean? What does like Scrum mean to you? What does it, how does it work in your industry? How does it work? And um, really, I think that was the key for me uh, up until now to connect with people and um, just be vulnerable and um, let them teach me, you know? Yeah, I think my next sort of question would be about how do we amplify that diverse and empowered community of women in Agile, in like increasing the representation of women in Agile? And yeah, what do you think is key to achieve a supportive and enabling environment? What I have seen and realized is that uh, women really need to be and are being more supportive of each other. Right. There was a um, study in HBR, Harvard Business Review, 2016, that said, if there is only one woman in the pool of the interviewees, there is a zero chance for that woman to get the job, even if she's the best, right? So this calls for not which women are actually working great on that, not being the queen bee, but also engaging and including other women because the more women in different roles, the more we are going to be receptive um, in, in those communities. That I think is a key 
that we understand that and support each other, help each other, build the communities around it. There's a community, um, women in Agile, that, that is in different cities uh, and different parts of the world that I'm a member of as well. Do a great job, women kind of, it's not just women actually in those groups. I see men participating as well, um, but it's, you know, predominantly women are trying to give each other insights from all aspects of, of the Agile um, practices and Agile ways of working and stuff, yeah. Mm, yeah, so I think what's the way forward? I guess what's your prediction for women in agile? You know, what do we need to do to continue that momentum? I think women will do great in anything and everything they put their uh, put their mind in. Um, regardless, um, we're we're human. Bottom line, right? Yeah. And we all have this potential to be able to grow in whatever we put our mind and heart on, regardless of our gender. So um, I would love for for women to kind of be able to get get that holistic perspective that regardless of their gender they can do anything and they are we are right um, read about other women who have been successful in the fields of business that you felt that probably women can't do yeah. like women astronauts or women physicists or women you know engineering leads and all of these that have been less common it's um the world is changing for for the better and that's great yeah, yeah, I absolutely love that. It's a great time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, we are beginning to see a huge increase in the, the visibility of female role models across so many industries. So it's great to have that. But um, Sarah, this has been such a great conversation. I wanted to finish with a final question for you. And that was, if you could give one piece of advice to women just starting their career in the industry, what would it be? Um, I would say maybe the best advice that I can give is that we really, we do have the power, right? And we need to look, number one, beyond gender and kind of have that belief that we can do anything that we want. And second is don't be shy to open up and build your community, like build a community, join a community of agile practitioners, of agile coaches, even people specifically, people who know more than more than you. And don't be afraid to ask help. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm new to this and I love to learn from you guys. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and you're going to get, you're going to learn a lot that you won't even expect. It's like you're going to get the results so you're going to hear things beyond what you've expected. Um, there's a lot to human potential that can be unleashed when you just put yourself out there and let others contribute to your growth. That's amazing. That's great advice, Sarah. Loved every minute of our conversation. So thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.